Hey guys, and welcome to Smart Money Minds. Now, today I'm going to go over the power of entertainment. Now, we all know, you know, watching TV, movies, games, all sorts of fun stuff that you do in your life. But this week, I'm going to go over two stocks that I have in focus, which is Netflix and Discovery. So how is it that you become an entertainment giant? And what are some of the news effects or news uh, updates that are affecting the stock price now? And why am I focusing on those two? So we're going to I'm going to tell you that in this video. There's some news coming out for Netflix. I'm sure everyone's familiar with what Netflix is all about. Um, we got some rising prices for Netflix in 2022, starting in February. Uh, there is a increase in price for, from the monthly cost here from, uh, we got an increase of $1 and we got an increase of $2 for the premium plan. So what does that mean for Netflix? In my opinion, it's starting to give signs of transition. So it was a growth stock because everybody was trying to get in, everybody was signing up for Netflix, but now it's starting to change into a blue chip stock. Now blue chip stocks are uh, what we consider as long standing. So the audience are standing around or sticking around regardless of price changes because they're so used to this sort of service now. And it's a trusted, reliable product that can be around for years and years to come. And Netflix is also a leader in its own field right now. We're looking at Disney or uh, all the other Hulu and all the other streaming services, they're just nowhere as big as Netflix. So it's leading the way in innovation and in stock price. Another thing that solidifies Netflix as a giant is that they're no longer relying on outside or outsource shows and production and they have an extremely strong production of their own now. They have a huge following, a lot of great shows, they're still signing in new subscribers but I mean a lot of these shows, let's just take a look at the list here, are becoming classics like Stranger Things, we have Ozark. Um, what else is there like uh, sex education uh, Emily in Paris like a lot of those shows people have been talking about and especially if you look at the Korean shows um, really big names like squid games we have the silent sea which came out very recently and there's a new show coming out all of us are dead and this is a new zombie movie so there's tons of shows that they are producing on their own and they don't need outside resources to do so so with the announcement that they're increasing prices in 2022 because of a drop in some of the viewership and audience um there was actually a big price jump on Friday, as you'll see here on the technical analysis and on the charts. However, this increase in price can actually only be a short-term catalyst only. So looking at the chart, we actually have earnings on the 20th here on Netflix. Seeing in a technical perspective, we actually still have a longer term daily downtrend. You see here, this was the top at 701. Now we started to have this move down, all the way down. So we had a jump on Friday, as you see here, when it was announced at around 12 o'clock uh, Pacific time and it started to sell off. But looking at the longer time frame, this didn't actually do too much. Zooming out here, I actually see a very clear support zone on the weekly around this uh, 460 zone to around 480 zone right over here. And that's what I'm watching for uh, around that support zone because as a technical trader, I'm not going to go in knowing with all this news and uh, all these catalysts. I don't trust that because I look at the chart and I see something completely different. And that's more logical than going with the hype of saying, oh, Netflix is a great company and we should just buy the dip every time. And so looking at a news outlet, The Motley Fool, they're saying to go all in because of the earnings. But once again, it's not about the numbers that come out, how much money Netflix earns. It's about the reaction of the traders and how they perceive 
uh, this sort of news. As you see here, it doesn't look to me that it's done selling yet because that news didn't really do too much. We're getting close to the support zone, so there's no rush to enter onto a trade for Netflix because your stop is quite far away and we have to always determine the risk to reward to your play. Because let's say you start buying here, you get a big move, maybe three, four percent, but then it drops back down. So where's your stop, right? I might as well wait until I see it come down into this zone and then maybe set a stop at around the 450 range so that it has a very tight uh, risk to reward. I, it's still in a daily downtrend, so I don't trust it yet until it changes the trend and gives me some signs that it's moving back up. And just to show you here on The Motley Fool, the article that I was looking at, is they're saying it's a rare all-in buy opportunity, but I always question that and I always make my own judgment and not just listen to what the media tells me here on, especially on stocks. Because at the end of the day, it's your money and if you go all-in, The Motley Fool doesn't care uh, if you lose your money. Now the next stock in focus today is going to be Discovery, so Disca. Uh, there was an upgrade from the Bank of America for the buy rating, um, and that's what shot up the stock price a bunch of days ago. There's also a merger with Warner Media to create another rival for Netflix and Disney Plus. And I'll show you a play I made myself on Friday because there's a beautiful pattern and the trend is actually, actually starting to change and there's a good setup coming here. Now on the technical analysis, there's a daily trend change on this. Uh, we got low consolidation volume given market weakness. So the market was quite choppy um, for the last couple of days, but discovery after that initial move, um, it started to fade, but very weak, very weak selling volume. And that's a good sign because if it were going opposite of the market, then it's doing something and it's got strength. And lastly, I'm going to show you some of the historical data giving hints of what is to come. So Discovery had a major sell-off all the way down and we had, look at this weekly downtrend and it's coming all the way down here. But let's take a look at this zone here. We keep going, setting a downtrend all the way down here until 2166. But now we're starting to push back up. And this was the day that uh, we had the announcement for Warner uh, Media, and it was saying that they were gonna merge, and that really helped the trend change. So we actually had a trend change before that. So there's a lot of people in the know generally, like insider trader and stuff like that. So they actually knew before this news here, before we shot this up. But let's take a look here was this pattern right over here on the daily bull flag. So this, uh, weak consolidation compared to what the market was doing. The market was kind of chopping around. It got a couple of days bought up and then on Thursday it got sold off, right? And then it kind of held the zone here. But if you take a look at Disca, it was holding on really, really strong given this market weakness. And then we actually started having some increasing bull volume. Now this is the play that I played on Friday. So I bought in at 29.40 and sold at 30.80 for a pretty decent uh, percentage gain here. So I'm gonna zoom in here to the five minute trend uh, or five minute uh, time frame here to show you why I bought the stock on Friday. And what I did was because I saw everything on the longer time frame, the daily time frame, the increasing bull volume, the bull flag here, I was seeing that there was a five minute uptrend here and it's holding the eight EMA, this blue line all the way up on the five minute. So what I did was I actually bought around this zone, uh, 29.41 at around eight o'clock. It says 11 here, but it's Pacific time. So it's 8.04. So I bought right around here and it started to trend up. And basically I just let it ride. I, as soon as I saw this move here, I set my stop to, uh, I had my stop just at low of day, so around 29. So this was my risk. Uh, I had about a one and a half percent risk here, 
but I had a gain of, because I sold around here, I gained almost 5% on this move. So that was a five to one uh, risk to reward ratio. So I just, all I did was let it run. I saw this higher low, I moved my stop to break even as soon as it started to go back up again. And so now I have a no loss play and essentially it just held the pattern all day long until I got to this zone here. I saw a decent bear, a little bit of bear volume and I didn't really want to hold overnight. So that's where I sold. That was my play there, but also looking at the historical data here back to uh, why I think this breakout is significant is because let's take a look at the last time it had some bow volume right around this range here. It pushed up, it gave upper wicks, so these guys could not hold the price. So even though it pushed over this, uh, this zone, it pushed back down and had no volume to continue. So that's why it trended down. But look at the volume here. We had increasing volume, we had the upper wick, but we had very low selling volume. And now we have this almost Marabozu candle, which is a full bar pushing right over this trend and increasing bull volume. And that's why I like to look at the historical data as well, because it gives you this sort of information. So in my trading opinion here, I'm gonna show you where I think I would buy and where my stop is and some of the targets as well. So what I would do is actually wait for Netflix to head back down to a clear support zone before purchasing. And I would set a stop just below the zone, maybe 450 zone, because I previously said, the support zone is around the 4, uh, seven, 460 to 480 zone. So if it breaks down from this zone, uh, then the play is clearly over. But what I'm anticipating is that it will give the short term catalyst, but the downtrend will continue until we hit around this zone uh, for earnings. And from earnings, we could have a nice pop and we could continue the weekly uptrend at this rate because you see here it came down and we could push back up for a second uh, lower high here. While on Disca, I'm looking for entry because we got a clean breakout. I am also looking for a back test of the $31 zone and I would set my stop at the uh, previous uh, daily low at 28. So let's take a look at Disca here. So Disca, because of this nice breakout, uh, there is a very nice stop right around this zone here because this was the higher low at 28. So I'm anticipating that we could get a bit of an extension. So this could go a little high and then set a higher low and then continue the uptrend. So that's where I'm going to look for a play. In the comments below, let me know if you're looking at other entertainment stocks like AMC, you're looking at, you know, besides Netflix, maybe Disney. So let me know if you are looking to buy any of those stocks or have any of those stocks and what's your game plan for them. Um, if you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit that like button, subscribe to my channel, and I'll talk more about the stock market. And we'll see you guys next time.